Elisha had made friends with this Shunammite woman. Right, And she would always let him stay at her house when he dropped in town. They built a little room for him. That's where we get the term prophet's quarters. Right, And so here he stayed at this lady's house. And he, every time she was so gracious and so kind, and he asked Gehazi, his servant, he said, what can I do for her? And he's like, yeah, well, you know, I don't know, but she doesn't have a child. I mean, they were well off. They didn't really need anything, but she doesn't have a child. And so he prophesied to her, and he said, by this time next year, somebody say, by this time next year. By this time next year, you're going to have a son. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that by this time next year, you're going to birth a new thing. By this time next year, you're going to birth that promise. By this time next year, you're going to birth that business. By this time next year, you're going to birth the thing that God has impregnated you with. If you believe it, shout amen. Amen. We got to keep our faith up. And so what happened? By this time next year, she had a baby. And the child began to grow up and started working with his daddy in the fields. And then one day, that most terrible thing happened. He got a head injury, and he died. And this Shunammite woman was mad. She said, Elisha, how dare you? Why are you prophesying to me? And now this happens. What are you? I thought you were a man of God. She's upset. She comes running. He sends Gehazi. Gehazi, go find out what's going on. Anyway, long story short, she says, Gehazi, go take my staff and lay it on the kid's head. That's an unusual method. And she said, listen, man of God, if you don't come with me, I'm not going anywhere. You're going to come home with me. Now, you prophesied this baby. Now, you're going to raise it from the dead. You're going to do something because you're a man of God. So he went, and he went into the baby's room, the young man's room, and he laid on top of this dead boy. Let me read you the scripture. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. 2 Kings 4, 29. So get ready to travel. Let me skip down. Verse 32. When Elisha, when Elisha arrived, the child was indeed dead, lying there on the prophet's bed. He went in alone and shut the door behind him and prayed to the Lord. Then he laid down on the child's body, placing his mouth on the child's mouth and his eyes on the child's eyes and his hands on the child's hands. What an unusual anointing. And as he stretched out on him, the child's body began to grow warm again. Elisha got up, walked back and forth across the room once, and then stretched himself out again on the child. This time the boy sneezed seven times and he opened his eyes. That's an unusual anointing. If that, was, if that was the only time it ever happened, that would have been enough because it's the word of God. But God always gives two witnesses. There was a time Elijah, Elisha had already died. He had gone on to be with the Lord. He died of a sickness. And he's buried. They buried him. And there was these two guys, and they were trying to bury somebody, but some bandits came. They didn't get to finish burying this guy, so they threw this guy into Elisha's tomb. Let me show you what happens. I want to read you the word of God. He's like, you're making this. I'm not making nothing up. 2 Kings 13, 2. <laughs> Scripture says, as soon as, a, as the body touched Elisha's bones, the dead man revived and jumped to his feet. Can you imagine? That's an unusual anointing. That's the kind of anointing I want. Amen. I want to turn heads for the gospel. Amen. I want to see souls saved. Listen, we, we've, we're tired of the fake leg growth miracles, aren't we? I want to see some real miracles. It's an unusual anointing.